Well, boy, howdy, buckaroos. Hello, and welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Q Basic Asylum. Unless you've never been here before, in which case, welcome front to Dr. Doodle's Q Basic Asylum. This is the YouTube page where not a whole lot happens, really. We just sit around, talk about whatever, and, and of course, programming. So, hey, well, this is episode five. Five, yeah. Uh, and today we're speaking about, uh, what is it? Well, oh, oh, yeah. We're going to be talking about... Variables. Constants. Arrays. Oh, oh my. my. That's right. Variables, constants, arrays. Oh, my. Yeah, so here, let's get to it. It's right here. I'm going to bring up the QBA005. You'll see it down in the link there. Just bring that up, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go through see what happens. Come on. Jack. All righty. Well, here we've got QBA05 up and ready to go. We'll just fire this up and see what happens. Now, in this... In this video, as I mentioned, we'll be talking about variables and arrays, which you've uh, you've probably heard of them if you've seen my other videos. If not, then go back, check them out. So we'll run this and see what we get. Bang, start. We get this menu, it says variables, constants, arrays, oh my! Well, here we got option one, demonstrate variables, option two, demonstrate arrays, option three, demonstrate constants, and option four, blast out of here. Well, we'll start with one, how about that? One, variables. Says, howdy, dear user. Well, I'm thinking we ought to get to know each other a bit better. I'm QBasic.exe. I was created by Microsoft back in 1991 to help you to create your own personal computer programs. Is that like far out or what? Uh, so tell me all about you. Like, what's your front name? All right, well, my front name, Doodle. Good. Groovy, how about your back name? What's that? Wild man. That's me, Doodle Wild man. All right, gnarly, and y'all got a title, like maybe Mr., Mrs., Junior, Senior, Your Majesty, something like that? Well, I'm the doctor, so doctor, enter. Says, all right, now, let me see if I got this right. You're Dr. Doodle Wildman, am I right? Uh, when you're right, you're right. But hey, dig this. Did you know I can deal with numbers, not just text? I mean, come on, I am a computer after all. Crunching numbers is my jam. So here, let's try this. Give me a number, Doodle, if you please. How about 14.92? Uh, Boom, and then a uh, fan flipping tastic, Dr. Wildman. Now, how about another number? Uh, we'll go 32.7, 34.7, enter. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do with these digits? We want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Let's go ahead and multiply. M U L T I P L Y. Answer 517.7424. Pretty freaky, no? But hey, listen up, though. Go ahead and slam any key you like when you're ready to jump back to the main menu. There it is. So now let's take a look at, well, it's uh, actually number four here. We jet out of here. Boop. Let's just take a look what happened here. So we go to, where is it? Okay, this is the variable demo. I won't go over every line because you've seen a lot of this before, but just to get, hit the highlights here. So we print your user, well, I've been thinking, blah, 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 all that stuff. Now, if you look, where is it? Uh, okay, so tell me all about you. Like, what's your front name? Right here, that's where we, uh, before we do the input, right there, input. So tell me all about you. And front name is the variable that we're saving. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with, with variables, uh, maybe you've worked with algebra in the past and math and you've heard like x, what's the value of x? Well, you've seen things like this here. Okay, so 2x equals 10 or y plus 4 equals 12. Well, it's pretty simple. 2x, that's 2 times x. x has got to be 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Simple. So x is 5. Here, y plus 4 equals 12. That means y has got to be 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. So these are just, the letters are, are like uh, placeholders for values that you don't know yet or that might change. Uh, now, in, that works in, in algebra, but computers Programs deal with variables a little differently. You can do all the algebra stuff, but you can also do things like this. Uh, what's this now? X equals X plus 1. Now, that can't be right. What if X is 2? X equals 2 plus 1? No, or 2 equals 2 plus 1? That can't be right. What this is saying, it's obviously, logically, it's not right, but it's saying take X and make it equal to X plus 1. So if x is 2, then you start with 2, and now equals 2 plus 1. So basically all it's doing is adding 1 to x and stuffing it back in x. And now if you look at it here, we got y equals y, I'm sorry, y equals 2 times y. So if y is 2, 2 times y is 4, 
to obviously the net equal four. So here again, we're saying y, take y and multiply it by two. y equals two times y. So that's all it is. It can take a variable, uh, a value, excuse me, and it'll save it for later use, like we saw that in another program. Or you can modify them, add them, subtract, do whatever math you need to do. Yeah, that's what variables are for. They're handy things. And arrays, they're groovy too. We'll get to them in a minute. So hold on tight. Let's go look over here. Bring up the, the code for this, this s code. And yeah, we'll be jamming. Hang on. So anyway, here's where we get our input. And then we, right there is our input. And then we use front name for the, the variable. And then groovy, how about your back name? That's back name. Notice, of course, the dollar sign. That's string or yeah, text variable. The title, which that saves in title. And then it just goes through and prints out all information. Like, for example, print. Uh, see if I got this right. Print. Mm. print title front name back name that's where it uses the variables that it loaded with the input commands so that's what variables are for all right see now here's the thing the thing with variables is okay a variable is a it's an area in memory up here in memory well in the computer memory it's an area of memory that you put a label to so you don't have to go by address like what see every piece of memory in a computer has an address so you can look up number one two three seven eight nine four five two and you bring up a, a piece of memory which might have some data in it well may or may not have some data in it uh but it, can you remember that number i can't it means nothing to me so but with a variable you can give a name or a label to a piece of memory and then you can access it later so, for example, if you want to store somebody's name, you use name, or even first name, first name, uh, back name, front name, back name, whatever. You give these memory locations names, and then you can access them just by the label that you created. So remember, here's where I stored this, here's where I stored that. So um, it took me a while to wrap my thick head around this myself, and then I realized they're kind of like, like that. See, they're kind of like this thing here, this mailbox. If you think of a mailbox, what is it? Well, it's a box, of course. It's a container for something, and it's got a name on there, Doodle, and it's got an address. See the, the address up front there? So it really does have an address, but you don't have to remember that number all the time. You just remember Doodle, and whatever's in there, you can put stuff in there. You can retrieve stuff out, and so it's pretty much like a mailbox, really. It's just it's an address in memory, with a name, so when you want to use that data, you just call that name, you're good. Okay, now, if that is a variable, then that right there is an array. Notice it's a box, it's kind of like a, a variable, but it's got a whole bunch of numbers on it. See, it's, it's like a variable because it can hold information, but not just one piece, this can hold a bunch of different pieces in it. Okay, and they're all the same. So if it's numbers, you, you can only put numbers in there. If it's a string, or, string array, then you can put data in the text in there you can also put numbers in we'll talk about that in a bit but uh, you can put data text in there and then you can save it so for example uh, let's see you got an array that says scores like for example we're looking at the scores in this program earlier or later I don't know where it is and anyway if you have a bunch of students with their scores what happens is you can have a score what score one is the first Look at the code, you'll see in the code. But anyway, that's the way I keep it in mind. You know, a variable is like this, it's like a, a mailbox, and an array is, it's that thing right there. Kind of like a, in an apartment house, you got the whole big box full of different mailboxes. So there it is. Okay, back to the, the, the here, over here. Let's, let's go over this way. Let's run this again. Run, start. And this time we'll go with uh, demonstrate arrays, bang. Oh, let's, let's see what the story is here. So guess what? You just became a professor of ancient Etruscan literature. Lucky you. Anyway, you just dropped a pop quiz on your students, and now you got to record their scores in this here computer database thingy, all right? So looky here. I'm going to ask you for the names and scores of 10 students. You poke them in here, and then I'll print them out all professional-like. Ready? Let's go. Enter the name of a student. Okay, let's start with... I got one. We'll go with Dasher. Oh, Dasher, there it is. Boom. And we give him a score of 10. Boop. And then Dancer. 
We'll give him 20. You know this. It, I'll, we'll fast forward for this nonsense. I'll fill this in and come back to him. All right, well, here we go. We've got all our, our data loaded, and uh, because of being like kind of festive, we'll be singing a Christmas carols. So, all right, here we go. We know this one here. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Cupid, Vixen and Blitzen and Dunder and Stupid, and then there's Comet and Rudolph, and the elves are all out playing golf. All right, enough nonsense. So there's a, we put our names in, there's the scores, and I print them out. But whoop, 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 hold the bus here, what gives? I don't see no blasted arrays here, just a pile of variables. Whoops, looks like you caught me cheating. I didn't use any arrays at all, just a whole mess of similar variables. Tell you what, let's try this again, but this time with arrays for real. So enter name of student, we'll go, um, how about uh, Greg? It's 10, because he's a dummy. Peter, I think yeah, you can guess where I'm going with this one. Bobby, Bobby gets 30, then there's, uh, let's see, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha is 40, uh, Jan gets a 50, uh, Cindy, she's the brainiac, she gets 60, Let's. there's Mike, Papa Mike, Mike's got 70, Carol, she's even brighter yet, she gets 80, and there's, who else is, Alice, can't forget Alice, she gets a 90, but guess what? Sam, her boyfriend, he knows what good thing when he's when he sees it, so he gets a hundred because he's smart. So there's all the, the names and the scores, and bang, we print them out. Here we go. Greg 10, Peter 20, Bobby, Marsha Jan, C blah blah blah. Now go ahead, check out the code for this section. I think you'll be pretty well shook. Go ahead, I'll wait. Time passes, Jeopardy music plays, paint dries. Da 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 da. Okay, so let's uh, exit here, boop, and let's just take a look at this code. So, where are we here? Then we got to look at the array demo. Okay, now this is the section with no arrays, and what we did, input, enter, name, of student, and then the name one, so the first student. Now, great, now what's their score? Score one, and the second one, enter, name, of student, name two, enter their score, score two, name three, score three, name, so these are all separate variables, Similar, but they're all different numbers. Uh, but you see all these different input vari uh, input statements and all the different variables and everything else. Now let's print them out, and it just prints name, score, name, score, name, score, name, score. So basically, this this time through, we'll do the same thing. We'll select all the, the input and everything else. But instead, what we've done, first of all, <coughs> we uh, do a dim, dim command, that's dimension. Now, dimension command, it sets up an array. In other words, before you can use array, you have to tell QBasic, well, how big is this? Where does it start? What is it all about? This and that. So we're dimensioning names, and because it's text or string, we got the dollar sign there. That tells that this is a string uh, array. Now, we, it's called names 1 to 10, and then scores 1 to 10. So there's two separate arrays. There's names, which is text or string, and then scores, which is... Uh, that's integer, I guess. No, actually, it's floating point. <clears throat> and now, here's the cool part. Since we got our arrays set up, now we can just do a loop. And we for z equals 1 to 10, please enter the name of the student, name z. So instead of name 1, name 2, name 3, we just put z. And each time through, the first time it's 1, so that it collects name 1. And it then, great, and what's their score? Name score z, that's uh, score 1. So first time through, name 1. Score one, that's the first student, the first score. Next, goes back up here, one is now, Z is now two, so it comes through, enter the student, name two, and score two, then it comes through again, Z is now three, name three. So in other words, instead of having all these inputs, look, we've got this loop here with just two inputs and just two variables. Then we go ahead and print it out, and guess what? When we print it out, we can do the same thing. We don't even have to, to print them all out one by one, we just, for z equals 1 to 10, print the name and score, and that's it. It goes through the loop, z next, 4 next, 4 next. Z starts at 1, so it prints name 1, it prints score 1. It comes back, now z is 2, so it prints name 2, score 2. Name 3, score 3, etc., etc., etc. So, now, go take, check the code for the section. Blah, 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 blah. All right, let's uh, pause here for a moment.
All right, we're back. And let's look here. It says, oh, cool, you're back. So how about that? See there, we done crunched 20 variables down to just two arrays, 20 input statements down to two, and 10 print statements down to just one. Hopefully, you'll see how arrays can make, make your job much easier and your life more goodlier. So as before, go ahead and slam any key when you're ready to bug out of here. Boom. We'll go back to the code. We'll take another look at this as far as the arrays here because that's what we're studying at the moment. Where are you? Got us the constant video. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Demo, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, so here is the here's demo two with no arrays. And if you notice again, we got all these input statements here. That's just too much typing and too many chances for for uh, typos. But it gets an input for the first name, the first score, second name, second score, third name, third score, fourth name. And if you wanted to print just one particular or print them all, you'd have to go through a loop and, and print them all. Well, actually, you couldn't loop. You'd have to just input, input, or print, 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 print. Like down here, we have to print, get 10 print statements just to get the names and the scores. But again, with the array, which we set up here, dim names, that's a, a string array from 1 to 10. Now, that... Uh, one to end, those are the, the elements. It's telling QBasic it's got 10 elements and starts with 1, ends with 10. Normally, if you don't put this, it'll start at 0 and at 9. So you have to be careful when you when you are using arrays with QBasic. They, by default, they start at 0. If you want them to start at 1, you type 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 or 1 to 50, whatever. Now, for, for arrays less 10, very, 10 elements or less, you don't even have to bother dimensioning them. It'll automatically set it up. However, over that, you need to set up the dimension command and you start tell it where to start, or you can also use option base. Now, if you use option base one, that tells it start at one instead of zero. That's basically all it's good for. But with array set up, now we just use a loop for Z, next Z, and enter name and student name, and then the index Z. Whichever Z happens to be, if it's one, then it takes name one. If it's name, if it's three, then it takes name three. And the same with the score. Names, name Z, score Z, round, around, 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 10 times, 1 to 10. Then, once it's got all the information, we come down here and print, look at this, one print statement. For Z equals 1 to 10, print name Z, score Z. So the first time it's 1, prints name 1, score 1. Next time it comes through, Z is now equal to 2, so it prints name 2, score 2. And that's the beauty of arrays. It can save similar type of data, oh, similar information. In, oh, in fact, in certain languages, Arrays are known as list variables because they're basically a list of, of information. But remember, they're all related or similar information. So, so grades or names or addresses or ages or things like that. If in an array, you can only have one type. With a variable, you can have one piece of information, one name or one score or one age. With arrays, you can have multiple different names, different na uh, scores, different ages, but they all have to be the same. So if your array, like names, if it's set for text, they all have to be text. You couldn't save uh, Dr. Doodle in the first element and then seven in, in the second element because that's text and numbers. It has to be all numbers or all text, or and when you come to numbers, you, ha you can have integer. They have to be all integer or all floating point or all whatever, double, double, so that basically whatever you set your array up to be, uh, whether, whether it's integer, floating point, or text or whatever, all the elements of that array has to be the same. So there's that. I guess that pretty much covers for arrays. There is one more thing about arrays. You can have what's called multi-dimensional arrays. That's for another day because that's a little more involved yet. Uh, but the idea is it's an array is similar. It's pretty much it's a, a variable, but a list of variables all with the same name. And you just select whichever one you want by using an index. So there's that. You know what else bugs me? Here's something bugs me. Why is this a snowplow? Snowplow. Why not uh, snow plow? I mean, snow plow, snow plow. Why? Explain. I don't understand. Now, I'll go and run this again. What's left here? Start. Well, how about three? Demonstrate constants. Boop. Look at there. We got a, a bunch of, of meaningless numbers. Now, remove the apostrophe from the beginning of the line that reads constant z equals one and see what happens. See all these numbers up here, right? I'll show you what's happening here. We'll just four out of here. Boop. Like I say, constants are easy. They're just variables 
that you set once and forget them because once they're set, you cannot change them. So look here, we got constant demo, color 11, one that just sets the colors, locate, print the constant demo. Okay, here's this line constant. If you notice the apostrophe right there, it's remmed out or, or commented out. So it's inactive at the moment. So we start here, z equals 0.1, for x equals 1 to 10, z equals z times 2. So at first it's 0.1, then 0.2, then 0.4, then 0.8, etc., etc., etc. Well, that's fine. You saw all the gibberish up the top. But now let's do this. We'll take this constant line out here. So where it says constant z equals 1. Let's try and run this. Start. Nope, oh, wait a minute. It says duplicate definition. What is going on here? Well, if you look okay here. If you notice, we now have constant z, and this is trying to change the z. And for one thing, a constant cannot be changed, but also it sees z, it sees this as a variable. But you already have a constant called z, so you can't have a variable called z. So that's why you get that message. But the idea is once you get a constant, you set it to one or whatever value you want, and it never changes throughout the, the course of the, of the program. Well, what's the value of that? Okay, well, take, for example, if you've done trigonom yeah, trigonometry at all or, or calculus, you might have come up across the, the, the constant pi, P-I, that's 3.14159, and then some more digits, just a couple more digits. But anyway, pi is always going to be that number. No matter what program you use it in, pi is always 3.14159, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why? It's the, well, not to get too involved, but it's the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, and it's always the same ratio. That's why it never changes. There's, uh, what's another good example? Um, well, for example, a, a, a tax rate. If you've got a tax, you're, you're an accountant and you're doing someone's taxes, now income tax is always, it's going to be 7% or whatever it is. Sales tax is 7%. That never changes. But let's say next year, they decide they're going to raise sales tax from 7% up to 8%. Well, now you just come in here, change Z from 1 to 2 or whatever it is. You just change the constant sales tax to whatever the value is, and then boom, set it, forget it. So that's all it counts is for. Basically, the constant is something never changes, and the only reason it's really, you could use a variable, but if you use a variable and then change it somewhere in the program, you might wonder, well, why the heck is my, something's not right here, it's not working. It's because you're trying to change the value of a constant. Well, a constant, by definition, is constant, it doesn't change. So they got the constant command, which tells QBasic, this is a value that's never going to change throughout the course of this program or human history. So there you go. I uh, think that's pretty much it. Uh, can't think of much else to say, but again, with, uh, let's see, look constant here. Boom, as I mentioned before, help, we look at constant, and it tells about the constant name, the expression. Oh, that's what I meant to, add. yeah, there's pi right there, 3.14159. And another thing to mention is a constant, it can be a, a literal value such as three or seven, or even a, a, a string variable, it could be a string constant, could be Joe, could be Fred. Uh, oh, one other thing, strings, string variables, and string constants can have numbers in them, but they're treated like text. You're thinking, what are you talking about? Well, think, for example, a, a phone number. You're not going to add or subtract to a phone number. A uh, street address, 123 Boogie Woogie Avenue. Uh, you're not going to change the 1, 2, and 3. It's just read as part of that address. Uh, a, a credit card number. Um, these are so, license number. These are all numbers that are well, they're constant, but if they're used in conjunction with, with words or text, then they're just, they're considered to be text, like an address. You're not going to do any math to it. On the other hand, numeric variables, uh, like oh, fractions or what have you, uh, sums, if you're adding things, a sum, a total, those can only be numbers. They cannot have any letters. However, with a constant you can set the constant with just a, a literal, something that constant equals 7. Or if you have another array, I'm sorry, another variable, you can set it to that variable. Constant equals variable 1, constant equals variable 2, whatever. Uh, and that's about it. I don't think I got much more for you. So, uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed and learned something. Again, if you have any more questions, look through help for these different commands. Uh, what's about? Boop.
Hey, QASIC, uh, that was DOS QBASIC version 1.1. What? 1987? Where'd that come from? Anyway, so there you have it. That's variables, constants, arrays. Oh my. See ya bye. Wah! Bye now. And gone. Hot wrap. Print.